Well, hi, and welcome back to Photoshop Elements Imaging Techniques and Tips. I'm your host, Ken Keith, and I want to welcome those in the local user group and whoever else may be tuning in on this video. We hope you'll uh, join us for some additional ones, and we'd like to hear from you and your comments and suggestions. Well, when you make a montage, an important thing that can really make a difference in making that one convincing would be shadows. For example, you always wanted to, I don't know, uh, go to uh, China and get your picture taken in front of the Great Wall. Well, so if you find a picture of the Great Wall and there's a picture somewhere of yourself and you drag it into that and you want to make sure that the lighting you know, from uh, all aspects is right and and then you're going to unless you're leaning against the wall you, uh, and even then you're going to cast a shadow on it so let's see if we can do something to make a more convincing montage by correctly orienting shadows in montages so let's get right to that Okay, I didn't happen to have a Great Wall of China photograph lying about, but I did have this test target, and we can pretend it's a wall, like this is the wall, and this is uh, the, a street in front of the wall, and you and we're going to be uh, moving something into the foreground, and uh, it's down here in the project bin, and I'm going to just going to drag it in and resize it so that the band takes up the entire area from top to bottom and then I'm going to scoot it over here to this side a bit and click OK well from the lighting here uh, it actually had several lighting sources but the main one is over uh, toward the middle and a little bit left of center and you can see that the from the highlights here on the watch that it uh, that the predominant light is over here on the left side so we're going to bring a shadow out over here and make it uh, go down here and then back up at the wall as it would if it were actually in the foreground now to do that I'm going to control click on this thumbnail and you see the little marching ants so that has been loaded as a selection and then I'm going to feather that selection a bit uh, 5 pixel radius is about okay All right. and then I'm going to go up to layer new layer and uh, just to keep track of things, I'm just going to call it Watch Shadow. And click OK. And actually that shape, that selection, is right here. And since it's going to be a shadow, it's going to be dark, black, foreground color to black. And now that we're be sure that this, the Watch Shadow layer is highlighted, press the alt and the backspace key and you see that it's it's filled in the shape of the watch and then we're just going to exchange places we're going to put that shadow now down here and with that highlighted here's your control point and I'm just bringing that shadow out Alright. Well, obviously, uh, if it were uh, actually in the foreground here, the shadow would not be uh, like this. And we're also going to lower the opacity and soften that shadow, but uh, we're going to do that last. So, once again, make sure that this, your shadow layer is highlighted. And then I'm going to take the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to basically lop off 
the shadow part of the band or make a selection there and after we do that we're going to hit control T for transform and holding down the control key I'm grabbing these bounding box handles and I'm skewing that in this direction. Of course a lot of it's hidden but you see if the light were coming here this would be at a diagonal. I'll click OK there and now we'll go back and actually we're probably going to need to to run this down just a bit more. Let's go back to control T and let's bring that shadow down to this level where it would normally be. There we go. And let's get him over just a bit into there and click OK. And now we can go ahead and take our rectangular marquee tool grab the rest of this shadow once again control T for transform bring it down to meet the base there and I think I'm going to hold down the control key get this mounting box and skew it out just a little bit and now we're going to lower the opacity of that shadow. That, that shadow is, is now down here and we're going to need to go back in since it no longer reaches the top and this does. If this were truncated that would be okay but since it isn't, we'll go ahead make a selection of that. Control T again. And we get this handle in the middle here and bring it all the way up. And now we have a much more realistic shadow. You can play with the opacities of these things. If you wanted to put a little blur on it you could. But now the orientation is correct. It looks like the shadow ran along here on the horizontal surface and then back up here on the vertical surface. So play around. Put yourself against a wall or on a street corner somewhere. Montage it. Have a lot of fun with this. This is a little more complex than, than we've seen before but it's a lot of fun to play with. Have a great week and I'll be talking to you in our next tutorial. Take care.